Hello everyone, thank you for joining me for what is set to be a very special unboxing. I've received this package today and I have been dying to open it, but I said to myself, you know what, I will save it and I will make a video for you folks and show you what's in the box. Now, I'm sure you already know what it is from looking at the title and the thumbnail. It's the Star Wars Skywalker Saga 4K Blu-ray box set. And I'm dying to crack this open. At least I hope that's what's in this box. It could be something totally different and that would end this video very quickly. But no, I'm going to start cracking this open and let's see what is in the box. So I have my trusty mini screwdriver. Oh my God, it's another box. There's another box inside the box. What, what a waste of packaging. Anyway, let's crack this even smaller box open. God, it's like um, past the parcel. I don't know, do you have past the parcel in America? I know here in the UK it's a, a big old Christmas tradition. Okay, here we go. Look at this. Look how perfectly this fits in this box as well. Gosh, I would also recommend not opening this box with a tiny little screwdriver because I could have nearly damaged the front of this. It is a good job I did not damage this. As you can see, it's the UK version because it's got the ugly logos on it. So here we have it. This is the Skywalker Saga 9 movie collection 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray box set. Gosh, that was a mouthful. But this is it. This is the big boy that we've all been waiting for. I do apologise for the reflective nature of the cellophane. You can see my camera tripod in this. It's just very shiny, but hopefully once I crack that off, it's going to look a lot less reflective, basically. On the top, you can see here there's the Star Wars logo and this hyperspace effect. And then as we go to the back, if I flip this around, it's telling you that this is the complete saga available for the first time because it's got episodes 1 through episode 9 of the Star Wars Skywalker Saga. So without further ado, shall we just crack into this? What is the best way to actually get this cellophane off? I think I'm just going to try and peel it with my bare hands. Not my bare hands, my human hands. I'm going to be careful as well. I don't want to already put some dents or scratches in this. So you'll have to bear with me if this takes a bit of time. See, if this was just a normal Blu-ray case, I'd just be whipping this bad boy off willy-nilly. This would just be straight off. Okay, we're getting there now. We're getting there. We're getting there, people. It's been taken out of the plastic, and you can now see this isn't reflective at all. This is a very actually nice, it's a nice matte finish, but the actual Death Star and the Star Wars logo and the Skywalker font text down here is like a shiny quality to it. It's very nice, this. I was right, because this thing on the top here, this is just a piece of cardboard. So, with all of the extra packaging, all the plastic's gone, all the cardboard's gone, we have this. Look how nice this is. I can't tell you, this actually, it feels so nice. I don't want to get all, all weird on you, but this actually has a very nice feel. It really, this feels very high quality. I thought because this is Disney and because this is like mass manufactured, you know, it's Star Wars for Christ's sake. You know, there's so many of these being made. I thought they might, they might just phone it in and just put some normal cardboard. But this actually does feel very nice indeed. And on the back, you can see it's just black with a bit of copyright text there in the corner. But this is going to look very nice for any people that are getting this. This would be a great display piece that you can just put, I don't know, on a mantelpiece or on a shelf or, or whatever. So before I open up the box and show you what's inside, if you're liking this video, please do consider subscribing to the channel because I do lots of videos on Blu-ray collecting and the Criterion Collection. And I want to do more stuff on Star Wars as well. So if you're into Star Wars and Star Wars Blu-rays, then stick around on the channel. And yeah, back to the unboxing. So that's what it looks like on the outside. Let's have a dig in and see what's on the inside. Now, I don't know what's the best way to open this with two hands because it looks like it kind of slides out like this. Look at this. So this this basically, maybe I should, what I should do is, so instead of pulling it apart like a Christmas cracker, let's slide one half off. See if we can get it open that way. 
Gosh, one thing I'll say is this is on very tightly. I'm actually struggling to get this off. Am I meant to... Am I doing this wrong? So I'm trying that. I'm trying this. Oh, I see. I see. So it's not meant to come off. Right, I've got you. Right, I didn't get that. That's what I didn't get. Okay. So as I was just opening this, I was expecting these end bits to come off. They don't come off at all. I should have actually looked at the artwork on the back a bit better because you can see it just kind of pulls apart. So that's something interesting that I did not know. Maybe I'm just an idiot. But yeah, this, these end bits don't seem to come off. And then what happens, you've got this little fabric tab and there you go. This comes out. So that's how you open it. I know that wasn't very elegant, but you know, we're, we're learning. This is my first time opening one of these. But that's how you get the films out that are in this massive big booklet thing. But yeah, the box just opens and closes like that. You can't actually take it apart. Obviously, I don't want to rip it apart, but it doesn't seem like... It doesn't seem like it goes any further than that. So that's the outer box, which is lovely. A great display piece. But this is what we came for. These... This is where the films are housed. So this is... It's, it's like a booklet thing. I don't know what's the best way to describe it. I think they call it a collector's booklet. So I'm opening up the first page. Ooh, ooh, what is this? What is this? Okay, so we've got a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, Star Wars. And this, which looks like some kind of note. I'm going to read this. Let's have a read of this. What an extraordinary journey it's been. Back in 1976, when Carrie, Harrison and I were testing for our roles... Oh, so it's, this is written by Mark Hamill. Okay. When Carrie, Harrison and I were testing for our roles in what was then called The Adventures of Luke Starkiller, as taken from the Journal of the Wills, Saga 1, The Star Wars, there's no way we could have known what an incredibly rich and imaginative set of adventures this obscure little space movie would launch inspiring eight more chapters to tell the entire Skywalker story. For some of you, that journey began with us over 40 years ago, inviting Star Wars into your lives from the seat of just a few dozen theatres in the first day of release. For others, you may have joined us somewhere along the way from the harrowing saga of young Anakin's descent to the dark side in the prequel trilogy, or the introduction of an entirely new generation of heroes in the sequel trilogy. As Carrie once said, Star Wars is about family, and that is what we have all become. One giant community that shares the common experience of these stories and the fundamental values they instill in us. Whether you're a relative newcomer to the Star Wars galaxy or a long-time UPF ultra-passionate fan, I am deeply thankful for your continued enthusiasm and dedication to George's faraway galaxy, which we will continue to grow with new storytellers building an even Bigger galaxy filled with heroes, villains, action, romance, and of course, the Force. May the Force be with you always, Mark Hamill. And it's signed by Mark Hamill at the end. Wow, that's quite a special thing to have in there. It's printed on this, it's not paper, this is on, on some kind of plastic. It's hard to describe without actually, you know, giving it you to actually have a feel. But this is not paper, this is on a some kind of plastic sheet. So with the letter out of the way, yeah, you've got a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, Star Wars. You can imagine the Star Wars theme tune in your head. I'm obviously not going to play it in this video because I will get copyright striked to high heaven by Disney. What you'll probably see though as well in this, the actual spine, it does open very nicely. So that looks like it has a lot of life in it. It looks like it's, it's well engineered. It's not going to crease. It's not going to crease very easily, which, which is good. For us collectors, we want to know that when we're opening this just to watch the films, you know, we're not going to ruin it. So, we're turning the first page. Look at this. I love that. This is artwork by Doug Chang, the Naboo Starfighter from The Phantom Menace. I love that artwork. That looks so nice. I wonder, is this original concept artwork for this film? It does look kind of old, the artwork up close. But I love this. And it looks like... So, in here... Now, this might be a gripe for some collectors. Because I know that some collectors do not like discs being housed in these kind of cardboard 
pages. You know, some collectors must have something holding the disc firmly in place, like one of those little plastic nubs that's in every Blu-ray case where you can just pop it in and you know it's going to stay in place. This doesn't have that. This looks like these are just sleeves. And obviously that's for saving space as well. All right, so what is the best way to take these out? Um, hmm. That is an interesting question. They pretty much just slide out, he says. No, you have to give them a bit of a yank. But yeah, so they slide out like this. So this, this is the 4K. It says 4K UHD, Phantom Menace. So you get the disc like this. That's the 4K one. This is just a standard Blu-ray. And interestingly, the standard Blu-ray is region free. So these Blu-rays are region free. So this will, this is the same probably that is in the US. They've just printed the logos on. Let's move on to episode two. Of course, this is the best film in the Skywalker saga. Uh, this is more artwork by, uh, I'm reading this upside down, by Ryan Church. And this is the Clone Army Assault. The same again. So it looks like this first one here, this first one is always the 4K. So that's 4K Attack of the Clones. And then the standard Blu-ray of Attack of the Clones is there. Moving on, we have Revenge of the Sith. And this artwork is Jewel of the Jedi by Eric Tiemens. Something I'll say about this artwork, though, I don't know if it's this is the original piece of artwork or how they've reproduced it here, but this looks quite low low resolution. Can you, can you pick that up on the camera? I don't know if that's just the original painting style and if they've just kind of blown up a section of the artwork, but that doesn't look that high resolution. Maybe... Maybe I'm wrong. So they've gone all out with the resolution on the discs. Resolution on the artwork, mm, not so much. But here you've got Revenge of the Sith. Revenge of the Sith 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray. And then you've got the standard Revenge of the Sith Blu-ray. And let's move on. Oh, look at this. So this is, I can already tell straight away, without even looking in the corner, that this is the original artwork from Ralph McQuarrie. This is the original concept artwork. Uh, yeah, so this piece is called The Millennium Falcon by Ralph McQuarrie. And obviously this is where it all began. This is the first Star Wars film. And for many people, this is their favourite. So there's A New Hope 4K Ultra HD. In this pocket, you've got A New Hope on the standard Blu-ray, showing the famous scene uh, where... Leia sticks a hand in R2-D2. Moving on. Ooh, look at this. So more artwork from Ralph McQuarrie. This is from The Empire Strikes Back. So this is episode five. This is the Cloud City of Bespin. Also, I don't know about you watching. Do let me know in the comments below what your favourite Star Wars film is. Because for me, Empire Strikes Back is the one. This is my favourite film. I have so many memories of this, particularly... This is one of the first films I saw in cinemas when it was re-released in the 90s. So I have such fond memories of this film. So here is the 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray, which is going to be watched very soon by me. And then you've got the standard Blu-ray of Empire Strikes Back showing the, the final shot of the film. Moving on, we get to Return of the Jedi. This is episode 6. More artwork from Ralph McQuarrie. This is Darth Vader's Arrival, is the name of this piece. So there you go. There's Han Solo on the front of the 4K Blu-ray. And then on the front of this, the standard Blu-ray, you've got C-3PO and R2-D2 on the way to Jabba's Palace. That rounds out the original trilogy. Let's move on. Here you've got The Force Awakens. This is episode... Seven. This is obviously depicting the Millennium Falcon, but it's covered in these sheets, implying that it's not been used for a long time, which we do obviously see in the film. So this piece of artwork is The Falcon Revealed by Andre Wallin. And let's have a look. BB-8 on the 4K Blu-ray of The Force Awakens. And then you've got the standard Blu-ray of Force Awakens showing the, the X-Wings gliding across the water. So moving on, we get to the last jedi 
And this is where everyone breaks out in a fight in the comments. Unless you're a stranger to the internet, you know that this film is very divisive. Some people love this film and some people hate it. And, and some people say it ruined Star Wars. And, you know, I'm, I'm not going to get into my particular thoughts on The Last Jedi. This piece of artwork is Luke Skywalker's Sunset, art by Seth Engstrom. So this, this is a great piece of artwork, actually. Obviously showing towards the, the climax of the film, Luke and the two sunsets, hearkening back, obviously, to A New Hope when um, Luke stares at the binary sunset. 4K Blu-ray, that's Ray being trained by Luke. And then standard Blu-ray, you've got Kylo Ren looking out on the uh, First Order troops and things like that. Moving on from The Last Jedi, you've got The End. This is The Rise of Skywalker. This piece of artwork is the final confrontation by Andre Wallin and Stephen Toppin. Stephen Tappin, sorry. This is the artwork, and this artwork is displayed on lots of promotional images for this film. It's on the front of the normal Blu-ray, I think, and it's on the front of some of the steel books as well. I actually really like this artwork because it shows the contrast of the red and the blue here, but then there's this blue in the middle, so it kind of symbolises that, you know, there's a lot more red, there's a lot more blue in this piece of artwork than there is red. So, you know, maybe that's subtly hinting at the outcome of this film. Who knows? But this is The Rise of Skywalker. This is where it all ended. So, again, on the left, there you go. That's the 4K Blu-ray of The Rise of Skywalker with Kylo Ren looking sad and wet on the cover. On the Blu-ray, you've got Rey looking happy and dry. So the complete opposite to Kylo Ren. There you go. That is The Rise of Skywalker. But there's more, because as you can see, there's still a couple more discs, plenty more discs, actually. So moving on, we have this. Oh, here we go. So we've got a big old bonus here. This is bonus on this left page. And here we can see it's actually split. We've got Phantom Menace on this page and then Attack of the Clones here. So these are obviously behind the scenes stills. Because here you can see this Phantom Menace, the uh, Grand Arena pod race. This is a miniature set because you can see the little cameraman here. And then you've got Anthony Daniels in costume as C-3PO for Attack of the Clones. We've got some Revenge of the Sith behind the scenes there with Ewan McGregor and Ian McDermott and Hayden Christensen. And then A New Hope, shooting the first glimpse of Moss Eisley in Tunisia. Empire Strikes Back, again... Another miniature animation sequence, which is very, this, this was very advanced for the time. In 1980 was when it was released, so this was probably 1979 they were animating this. And then Return of the Jedi, again with a young bearded George Lucas. Then you've got The Force Awakens behind the scenes with J.J. Uh, Abrams and Daisy Ridley. And then behind the scenes, Ryan Johnson explaining his vision for the scene. And then finally, you have this two-page spread. Director J.J. Abrams guides Adam Driver as they prepare to film, obviously in the crashed Death Star uh, throne room. And then Oscar Isaac and John Boyega get comfortable during a break. That's all 29 discs. And then the end is just space. We're just left with the emptiness, the cold emptiness of space. And that's it. Lucasfilm Limited. That was the complete rundown of the Skywalker Saga box set. I'm going to try and handily get this back into the case now. Let's see how easy this is. Maybe put it in like this. There you go. It's in. I forgot to put Mark Hamill's letter in. I'll just put that in like that for now. And there you go. I do hope you've enjoyed seeing this. I know it was a long video, but I wanted to do a deep dive and actually show you what you get in the box before you purchase this. And it looks like a fantastic set. It looks pretty much like a complete set. If you like this video, do let me know in the comments below. Stick around on the channel and consider subscribing. And if you want to watch more videos on Blu-rays, 
from me, then just click whatever video is on the screen right now. And I'll see you in the next video.